let me introduce you to Fuzzy Gotuako. Now, I apologize in advance, and you will understand why. Fuzzy Gotuako has been teaching theater arts for over 20 years, both in the United States of America and in China. He is presently in Texas. Fuzzy enjoys jogging, mountain climbing, hiking, spelunking, X Games, swimming with sharks, and lying about his hobbies. In his own words, he is a scholar. He is a gentleman. He has a cute ass. So please get ready to have your shoes rocked off and put your hands together for Fuzzy Go Twaco. Is it on? Is, is my mic on? I, I can't. I see you, Christian. I see you in there. I know you're trying to you turn off your camera, but I see you in there. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Fuzzy Go Twaco. I know you can't read my name because Christian is my hero. I want to talk today about some of the things that I do as a theater teacher to make my students successful in their presentations, both on stage, in a classroom, and even in Zoom. I'm going to be asking you to participate with me. I'm going to see who's brave enough to leave their cameras on while we do some fun and silly things. And I saw all those videos of things people have done so far, so I know you're used to doing some crazy things. So let's have a little bit of fun. As we go through today, realize that everything you need is already right there. Everything you need, it's within you. It's everything in your hands, it's everything in your face, and it's everything in your voice. You have everything you need in your toolkit. The only thing you're missing is maybe some instructions. So let's go through the list of things you have in your toolkit, and then we'll talk about some instructions. It's that simple. The first thing I'd like for you to do is to roll your head around just a little bit, just to loosen it up, make yourself feel comfortable, remind yourself of what you were like in fifth period math class in middle school. Uh, okay, good. And I also want you to remember that we're videotaping all of this. Okay, all of this is gonna be used for next year's convention. It's gonna be great. And now what I'd like for you to do is to simply rotate your shoulders forward. And now roll them back. We're loosening up our shoulders where we hold a lot of tension. Tension is what keeps us from being our best. And now for you schizophrenics, if you would roll one shoulder forward and the other one back. I know this is going to be great when you have to babysit the grandkids and now the other one, the other one forward and the other one back. I'll tell you, it actually makes you look taller when you do this. That's not true, but everybody likes to hear it. It does screw up your suit jacket though. I apologize. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold your shoulders up for a count of three. Yep. One, two, three. Woo. And up one, two, three. Good, that's me in my math class. Do you know the answer to the problem? I don't know. All right, very good. So we do that to release tension. We're not gonna do it for the length of time that I would suggest you do it because we don't have that much time today. A Couple other things we're gonna do. You're gonna take your hands, and I know most of you are seated. So we're gonna do the things that are upper body first, then we'll do the whole body later on and see who really wants to you know, get jiggy with it. All right, I'd like for you to take your thumbs, start moving your thumbs around yes for you video game players this is important and now your pointer finger this is the one we use to point at the people who messed up you you christian okay point for middle finger this is the driving finger the one we use to communicate non-verbally on the road and now the ring finger and the pinky this is when we notify people i'm drinking tea please don't irritate me right now good and now all the fingers right this is what we use to look at the grandkids on zoom okay good all right now your wrists don't forget your fingers can't forget your fingers while you move your wrists and now your elbows don't forget your wrists and now your shoulders are you feeling like half a cockroach dying don't forget your wrists and your fingers very good 
Are you tired? Good for you. Now, if you'd like to stand up and try this with me, that would be great. If you can't stand up because you didn't think you were gonna have to wear pants today, stay seated. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your hips in place and rotate just your upper torso. We have to remind ourselves that our torsos can move independently. Now rotate your upper and your lower torso. You're like, I could have watched this on a, you know, aerobics with the 80s instead of watching this. And now, for you truly talented people, your shoulders one way, and I see you down there, that's very good. Your shoulders one way and your hips the other way. Like they're gonna pop off a cork on a bottle. Excellent. Up and down in your ankles and knees. Just moving your ankles and knees around. Very good. You may rejoin us seated then. All of you did very well. I appreciate that. I see you guys getting back down. Y'all are getting right with it. Those of you who are doing this in your car, I'm terribly sorry about the accident I just caused. Just to let you know, some of the things we do, we don't even realize what we need from our bodies to do it. Let me give you a quick example, then we'll move on to the vocals. You're wondering, when are we ever going to understand, need to understand that our bodies twist? Well, how about, very simply, when you have a PowerPoint and you're standing in front of the screen? We don't want to do this. So how do you keep the face to the camera? Twist our body. We simply forget. We forget unless it's instinctive to us that we have to twist our bodies. We can gesture backwards. We forget that we can gesture backwards. Not just gesture here, but we can gesture up until we go out of screen. And then maybe it can come back into screen. We can gesture to the side until it comes out of screen, but we can gesture behind us. When we gesture behind us, it adds a depth. Now all of a sudden we've done more than just been two dimensional. My face is in a box. And frankly, we're used to seeing people in the box long before Zoom, TV. We're used to this frame, artwork. We're used to the frame. Artists work so hard to make things look three-dimensional. And then here we go, and we only act two-dimensionally. We can help ourselves by reminding people we have three dimensions. Being able to gesture backwards, being able to move back to front, understanding the frame that we are in, using everything we have, within this frame. Many of you are wondering, well, we don't have this big stage area to do our presentations. We're locked into a meeting room or we're locked into Zoom. Yes, but you have just enough room. Where do I have room? Right here. You have room right here. Hey, look at my friend. We have plenty of room. We just never thought about using it. Ooh. We have a lot of room. And I know you're thinking, well, you're bald, Furzy. I got hair space, you know. Well, then you simply step back a moment. And now you've got just a little bit more room. Yes? The size of our head gets smaller. Now you're thinking I can crush your skull. No. We have this much room to play with. We're not locked into our size on our screen. Additionally, where is our camera? Because if our camera is always down on our desk and our heads are above it, then doesn't that look a little bit like the viewpoint of a Lilliputian looking at Gulliver? Hey, right? You know what I'm saying? It's just a little weird to conduct your entire meeting from here and then your head disappears and then, you know, you're, it's all wonky. What's our audience seeing? What is our audience seeing? What can we manipulate? Everything is there in front of us. 
we can move our cameras exactly where we want them. We can move ourselves exactly where we want ourselves. We can be closer. We can adjust our voice. Or when we're a little bit farther, I simply remember to adjust my voice accordingly. So our bodies are here. We can gesture back, forward. We can adjust our gestures to the space we have. Keep in mind, watch my hands. Ah, huh? they disappeared. So what's on screen here goes off screen when I move in. We've got to adjust. And what's on screen here disappears from this far. We have to adjust. And you can walk and move at the same exact time. Like talking and driving. We can adjust as we move. Take all of that into account. Another thing to take into account when we gesture, when I had you move your shoulders, not only are we reducing the stress in our body by doing those activities, which will then allow us to speak with more clarity, but it allows us a strength and a size of gesture. Allow me to demonstrate something for you. Remember these speakers at their first icebreaker speech? If they actually moved off the podium, they would do this, right? This is the gesture. What is that? I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's called a forklift. The forklift, yes, gesture by forklift. Do you know what subliminally is sent to your audience when you do this? I got nothing. My hands are empty. I'm looking for answers. But if you're the speaker, you're supposed to have the answer. Why do we only give our audiences palms up? I got nothing. I'm a forklift. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, so let's do more than that. Let's experiment with our hands that are more than just at the elbow. Let's experiment with our hands at the shoulder. When we start movement at the shoulder, now I'm not just saying you all gotta like, you know, do dance moves, but I, I know why you're laughing. You're laughing because I can't do the dance move. But the idea is that when you have a gesture that starts with the shoulder, it communicates to your audience that you're fully committed. The body is committed. I am committed to this. There is a power behind what I do. Even if it's subtle, the power is there because we subliminally feel when it's at the elbow. He's not committed. He can't even lift his arm up. He's so lack of commitment. He so has a lack of commitment. He can't even get his elbow up off his, of his body. It's just here, it's right at the wrist. So we have to coordinate our shoulder, our arm, our wrist. Wrist, just one. Our gestures do not have to be symmetrical. Say it ain't so. Our gestures do not have to be symmetrical. That's right, we can only have one forklift. Our gestures can be right there. Imagine you had to talk about a topic that had several descriptors. I have this object and this object has shape, it has dimension and I went to the store and I bought the object and nobody liked the object, but I knew what the object could be used for. So I took the object, I bought it, I made it nice and then I gave it to my mother-in-law and she thought it was fantastic. By I know, just the thought, just the thought of a mother-in-law makes us all laugh. Terribly sorry about that. Okay, so it's Christmas, be nice. So here's the deal. You can hold your hand up and you can sustain a gesture. Think through your speeches. Isn't there usually a theme? Isn't there usually a point that you may wanna repeat two, three, even four times, right? In the introduction, in the body, and in the conclusion anything, anything that has to be repeated, your key point, if you can create a gesture 
that every time you hit that main key point, you have the same gesture. What have you done? You have reinforced your theme, not just verbally, but visually. And ladies and gentlemen, we are a visual society. We are a visual society. If you go back in time, they would say a phrase like, let's go hear a play. Not see a play. Let's go hear a play. Now, let's go see. Let's go see a movie. Let's go see this show. We probably don't even say, let's go hear this band. Let's go see this band. Very visual. So we have to be aware of this wonderful thing called Zoom that sends us out into the airwaves and is this size and still use our hands to conduct people's eyes to our faces. Use our hands to conduct an image, to create an image that our audience relates to the message. We must be just a little bit better every day. We must be just a little bit better every day. Just a little bit. Yeah. That's my image. So what's the image you have for your gesture? Are you for your message? Are you using one finger, two fingers? Are you using your shoulder? Are you using both sides of your face? Are you using both sides of your body? Are you tilting your body? Look at that profile. <clears throat> it is possible to tilt your body even when you're sitting in your nice swivel chair. What happens when you tilt and you adjust? It's different. It gives the audience a different look. They're tired of just this. We get very tired easily nowadays. We have very short attention spans. How short? Whoa. Did you see that shiny object? Okay, we have very short attention spans. I know. I teach kids. Sorry, I have a kid right here, right, right over there. She's about to come on in just a moment. But they have very short huh? attention spans. Very short. You try keeping the attention of a kid when your name is as long as mine. Hi, my name is Furzy Go. Hey, listen up. Go to. Oh, you just give up. John Smith, you're a lucky guy. Furzy Go Twako, not so much. So we have to keep changing this image. Now I know us older folks were like, well, they can just learn to get an attention span. We're going to lose that battle. We are going to lose that battle because it's on TV, it's on movies. Don't believe me? Watch a TV show and time how long a camera is on and then it switches to the other camera and then it switches back to this camera, switches back to that camera. Watch a music video. It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind at how quickly that picture is changing. And here we are in Zoom going, okay, I'm gonna talk to you for five to seven minutes and use up all of my 30 second grace period. No, are you nuts? We're already on our phones. Our phones are right out of camera range and we're texting. Every once in a while you see our thumbs going. Okay, so let's help our audiences along. Yeah, I see that phone. Okay, so let's help our audiences along. Let's use our hands up here, up here. No, let's use our hands up here. Let's do one at a time. And let's understand that our hands are flexible. They don't always have to be forklifts. They can move, they can flex. And the more images we have of our fingers and our hands, the better chance we have of holding our audience's attention. Let's do a couple of vocals. Now to do our vocals, oh, by the way, one of the gestures I forgot about, our face. Can we practice some facial gestures right now? I want you to make as big a face as possible. Ready? One, two, three. And little face. And big face. And little face. Very good. I'm also very proud that only one of you, when I said make a big face, went, so thank you. Thank you for interpreting me. That was great. I know one of you, I went big, big, big face, and you went, hey. And I'm like, okay, I really didn't want to be your dentist, but hello, teeth. So. We have to make sure that our faces are <laughs> very cute.
Thank you, Elaine. We have to make sure that our faces are just as expressive as anything else. You know, in that wonderfully, very specific evaluation, that was sarcasm, by the way, that wonderfully, very specific general evaluation where it says eye contact. What do we really mean by that? I mean, isn't that a yes, no? No. Eye contact. Eye contact. Eye contact. Eye contact. This eye, that eye. And then as the teacher, you also have the stink eye. You know, so we have many different kinds of eye contact, all part of head gesturing and even facial expressions. Using our face, allowing for different styles of eye contact, again, changes the picture ever so slightly. It's like when you used to steal a cookie, you'd move the other cookie in place so they wouldn't realize that you stole a cookie ever so slightly. Just a little bit. All right, now let's do vocals. I keep promising this to you and now we're gonna do them. The first vocal is to simply blow through your lips. All the guys love doing this. All the girls hate it because it screws up the makeup. All the guys now realize they also hate it because now it screws up their camera. Go ahead and wipe it off. There you go. So by blowing through your lips, you loosen up your lips. You must loosen up your lips. Good. Now take your tongue and swirl it around the inside of your mouth. I don't know. It's really embarrassing. We're all professionals here and this idiot's making me do this. Anything you find is yours, but this does not replace flossing. You still have to do that. Good. Now, if you want to go to the next level, what you're going to do, I know this is like really grossing you out and you're already crossing me off that Christmas wish list. Rub your tongue up against the sides of your teeth. Good. When you speak, what's the muscle you use most? I know a lot of you say, you need your backbone. No, it's your tongue. The tongue is the thing you use the most. And yet, if you don't warm it up, you sound, like, you sound like Jar Jar Banks. So we must use our tongues. There are many tongue twisters you can use. Many, many tongue twisters you can do. Try this one. It's very simple. It's the T and the D sound. Duh, 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 The T and the D. Now try this one. The P and the B. Buh. Ba, 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 and then the K and the G. Ga, 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 ga. Why are those two sounds paired up? One pair, second pair, third pair. And yet they're the same and yet they're different. Can anyone tell me why they're the same, why they are paired up, how they're the same, and yet how they are different? Twist of the tongue, good. Plosives, good. Voiced and unvoiced. Olga, thank you very much. Ding, ding, ding. I don't know if anyone else got it, but I just happened to see Olga's. Yes, those sounds are paired up because they're made the same exact way. The T and the D, duh, made the same exact way. The P and the B, ba, made the same exact way. K and the G, g, in the back of the mouth, made the same exact way, but one is voiced, one is not voiced. We must always have voiced sounds. Sometimes if we don't voice the sounds, the D sounds like a T and then it goes down. We don't hear the end of the word. We have to hear the end ends of the words. So we change the T to a D sometimes and we can change the S to a Z words, right? When you write it out, it's ends ends of the words right it's an s not a z but when you say it you make it sound like a z it has resonance it carries so by voicing it we make sure that the sound carries please take a look at the chat i have a sentence there for you today i will speak with a rich round resonant voice i invite you to repeat that with me ready one two three 
Today, I will speak with a rich, round, resonant voice. It's not a tongue twister, but it's a great phrase that includes many of the vowel sounds that you're going to need. And I already went and prepaid, so you don't have to pay for those vowels. I already took care of that for you. It's just one of those little things just for being here on the conference. We took care of that for you. And make sure to hit the ends of the words as well. That's clarity in how we speak. But let's go further, because clarity in how we speak is just stage one. What you really want to know is, how do you nail it? How do you seal the deal, baby? How do you take it to the next level where people are like, holy smokes, did you hear that? Okay, pausing. We have to learn how to pause. Breaths and pauses. Breaths and pauses. Pause might be half a breath. A breath is when you actually breathe. Those of you who sing, you understand breathing. Every breath gives you energy. If you don't have the energy, if you don't have the fuel, then you can't take a breath. If you don't have enough fuel in the tank to breathe and give enough air, then you don't have enough gas in the tank to hit your key words. Why do you need key words? Key words are how you invest emotion into the words that you speak. I know, that was a lot right there. That was like, it just gave you a ton. Now we're gonna demonstrate some of that. I have my student here, her name is Megan, and she's going to demonstrate that tongue twister, that last one. Today I will speak with a rich, round, resonant voice. All right, thank you, Christian, for putting it up there. And she's gonna do it two different ways. All right, please, warm welcome, Megan. Hello everyone, I'm one of Mr. Gotagwo's students and I will begin. Today, I will speak with a rich, round, resonant voice. Now for the second one. Today I will speak with a rich, round, resonant voice. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Very simple, very simple. You can create emphasis for the words by putting pauses before or after. You can create emphasis for your words by putting a pause before or after the word. You can create meaning by putting a pause before or after. To make sure that you have the energy to punch a word, to key a word. You must breathe. If you have a long sentence and you want to key more than one word, you will have to take more than one breath. If you have a long sentence and you have more than one key word, Meaning I got to hit this and I got to hit that. They need to understand this and they need to understand that. I might need to take a breath in between. So let's take a look at today. I will speak with a rich, round, resonant voice. Today, I will speak. Breath. With a rich, round pauses, resonant voice pauses, voice. But if I want to hit each of those words and give each one even more meaning than just a pause, then I'm going to have to take more breaths. I could take as many breaths as I want. They're free. As long as, long as everybody's, you know, got social distancing. Otherwise, taking a breath could like, be kind of disastrous. Today, I will speak with a rich, round, resonant, voice. So example, we are going to have a mission statement that talks about our breath, authenticity, breath, commitment to people, breath, focus on 
our customers. If each of those is that important, thank you, Green. If each of those is that important, then you need to take a breath before them. If you don't take a breath, you're going to run out of juice. Sure, you're going to get it said. Sure, they're going to hear it. But if you really want to put it over the top, if you really want to seal the deal, if you really want to make sure that it sticks in their mind, then you've got to take a breath. You also might want to repeat it. That helps. But if you didn't take a breath and you did repeat it, it still might not stick in their mind. By taking a breath, it allows us to key a word. Think of keying as in unlocking. The key word unlocks the meaning of the sentence. The key word unlocks the meaning of the sentence. Take a simple sentence. I love you. I love you. If you key the first word, what's the meaning of the line? I love you. Not Christian. I love you. Christian will give you green, red, blue, but I love you. I love you. Key the second word. I love you. I love you. Christian just lusts after you. I love you. I love you. I don't love Christian. I love you, Nick. So by focusing on a particular word, by keying on that word, Elaine, I didn't mean to leave you out of that. I love you too. So by keying a word, we can change the meaning of a line. Now you wrote the line. So if you wrote the line, then you know where the important word is, right? Where's the important word? At the end of the sentence. Oh, that's cute, Elaine. At the end of the sentence, the most important words, 90% of the time, are at the end of the sentence. Ask any rapper. Like singer rapper, not gum rapper, gift rapper, whatever. So the ends of the word, the ends of the lines are where you want your most important words. Build your statement to the end of the line. The key word is at the end. But make sure you have enough juice to get to the end. If you need to take a breath, take a breath. Make sense so far? Am I only halfway through? Oh my gosh, I gotta come up with something else for the next 10 minutes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is talk about my last point, music. Music, the muse, I listen to my muse. Christian, would you please put the poem into the chat? We're gonna use this poem right now. Okay, this is crazy as if I haven't been crazy so far. I love to use music. I love to use music when I write my speeches. I don't really write the speeches, as, you know, but when I'm creating the speeches, I love to use music when I Christian, why does that look all wonky? When I speak, when I learn to speak the speech I pray, when I learn to speak my speech, I use music. Music allows me to find natural pitch variety. Everybody always asks, how do you have pitch variety? I don't know, I'm just born with it. No, pitch variety, there's music, right? Rehearse your speeches with music. Find a song that seems to speak about your theme. Find a song that speaks to you of that theme. You'll find natural pitches to your speech. And when you're writing it, you'll find natural inspiration for word choice. It may even help you with shorter sentences from time to time. It may even allow you to repeat words. Why? Because in songs, they tend to repeat words. So it naturally gives us inflection. It naturally gives us power. So what we're going to do is use this poem. And I'm going to show you how using music can change the interpretation of this poem. 
or at least change the presentation of the poem. It may not change the interpretation, or maybe it does. So I'm going to ask my friend, Megan, to come back on here, and she has prepared some lines from the poem. All right, Megan, you ready? Here yes. she goes. Hello again. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Thank you. Great, huh? Great. Drama club president. Fabulous. Man, kids are awesome. They really are. I know I made fun of them earlier, but they're really awesome. I want you to think about the lines that you see in your chat. And I want you to think about one of the stanzas. You don't have to do all of it, but think about one of the stanzas and think about how you would say it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play some music for you. And I'm going to try one of the stanzas and I'm going to show you how it might be done in several different ways. So allow me to play the first song. That's right, it's me, DJ Verzi. It starts out a little slow. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear the music? Great. So let's take the first verse. Out of the night that covers me. Black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. You take it and take it to the end. If you were to rehearse this poem with the music in mind, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Now we can change this completely. Whether you know the interpretation of the line or not, we can change this completely. This was Nick's favorite. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. And you can play this all the way to the end. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I'm not asking you to like ACDC. I'm asking you to love it. No, no. All right. Uh Fuzzy, uh, you have 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left for what? T ten, 10 minutes? I, 10 minutes? Christian, Christian, 10 minutes. I, I can't do anything in 10 minutes. I can't even comb my hair in 10 minutes. Are you crazy? All right. Well, look at you. There's no hair. Please go on. Oh, there's no hair. You Where's my wig? Okay. So. Would anyone like to take a crack at this? Thanks, Christian. I do like beating up on Christian. He's great. I'm taking him with me everywhere. But he did give me that nice little compliment about my backside. So I know I'm going to use that hard something because. All right. Um, would anyone like to give it a shot? Any of the verses or any line? To try where you would take a pause. Yes, Elaine. Try where you would like to take a pause and where you would key a certain phrase. Elaine, do you have the ability to unmute yourself? No. Uh, can I do that? Yes! No? Yes, no. I can't unmute you, but I can remove you. So don't don't use that finger to salute me anymore. I am unmuted. There's, there's Elaine, there's Elaine. Okay, good. Will there, be will there be music? Would you like for me to play music? Yeah, just give me one at random. Christian, sing a song. No, just kidding. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is for you, Elaine. Anytime, baby. Okay. That's 
that's life. In, that's what all the people say. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Woo! Nice job. That's live. I like it. Thank you. Would anyone like else like to give it a shot? You don't have to sing Sinatra. You can have anything else you'd like. Is that, a, is that Donna? Donna, were you saying that you'd like to do it? Or were you just winking at Christian? I know. Everybody gets that thing where they want to wink at Christian. I winked at Christian. And then he said 10 minutes left. All right. Is Donna unmuted? Yes. Excellent. Would you like music or would you like to do it on your own, Donna? On my own. Yes, ma'am. I'll try music later. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. Very nice. <laughs> Woo! Thank you both. Thank you both. I appreciate it. I think if we can take something like a piece of poetry like this, or even if you are simply taking numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, anything, then you can play with the duration of words, duration of gestures, pauses in your phrasing, Pauses in your gestures, okay? You can do all of that. You can pause, you can speed up, you can have variety to anything, physical or verbal. You can play with all of that. All these tools are in your toolkit. You just have to remember where you put the directions and the how-to manual, and then make up a few of your own. Were there any questions that you had for me? Is it time for questions, Christian? I believe it is time for questions. Hey. And I do have a few questions for you. Okay, Christian, go ahead. All right, number one. You're not going to ask I... me that question about why it feels so good to... Okay, because that was like, that was before everybody. Okay, I don't think we should talk about that here. Just I saying. I love you. Kind of professional. All right, so... We... <laughs> Right. Keep it together, man. Be a professional. <laughs> the first question is, how, how do you keep your background black? Do you have a black screen versus a green screen? No. I try not to be racially motivated in that way. No, no, no. I'm, I'm on a theater stage, so I have natural black curtains behind me. You can do this, too. I'm going to set up a kit for $19.99. I can send you a black curtain and a couple of lights, and you can set it up in your very own living room. That's all. It's just, it, it is simply a black curtain. I'm on an actual stage. I know. I'm about ready for the magician to blow it. Oh, my. I know. Now, all of a sudden, I don't quite look as handsome, do I? Sorry. Well, uh, you're still lovely in our books. Oh, thanks. Uh, he, 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 that one. Here's the next question. Do we have to plan our gestures? For example, you have been speaking for 40, 50 minutes. Did you plan ahead your gestures? And if yes, how did you proceed? That's an excellent question. Thank you to whoever uh, gave that question. Sometimes I do plan. Other times I'm gonna improvise. Part of that is because I've been improvising as a teacher. Other times, if your speech is that important to you for whatever reason, right? You're, you're trying to motivate your group. You're trying to inspire your group. You're trying to influence them. And there's a particular gesture that you gotta have. And you should rehearse that. Whatever that gesture is, whatever that gesture is, Whatever that gesture is, rehearse it and time it and then nail it. And if it's at the end of your speech, 
whether it's at that seventh minute or the 25th minute of grace period, 25th, 25th second of grace period, then time it to that. Time your speech and your gesture to that length of time. So when you see red card, oh, I go straight to it. When I see yellow card, like I do now, I go straight to this gesture. And you, you time it. So yes, choreograph yourself for those particular moments. If you need to choreograph your whole speech, go ahead and do so, but be flexible, be flexible. No one wants to see you do Y, M, C, A, and then lose the M because you weren't flexible. Not flexible physically, but I mean, flexible with, you gotta change it, you know. Yes, sir. Thank you, Fuzzy. Here's the next question I have from uh, the audience. Do you suggest a voice coach for the speaking professional, just as singers have voice coaches, should prof uh, speaking professionals and Toastmasters also get voice coaches? Why, yes, I do. And you can reach me at gotwakof at yahoo.com. No, no, no. I, I think any of us can, I think any of us can work with what we have. Now, if you want to work with somebody, you certainly can. But I think all of us have the ability to speak. All of us have a voice. We all have potential resonance. We were born with it. Case in point, the baby in the restaurant screaming and crying. Got all that volume. How does such a small package produce so much voice and so much poop? We have the volume, but through years of stress and beat downs by teachers and librarians, we learn to lower our voice and we have to relax and unstress and grow with imagination about what our voice can do. And then we regain what we already have. I was serious. You have all the tools you need. All the tools are there. You have to relax your voice and it'll come out. A voice coach will help you get there faster. A voice coach will help you get there sooner, but you can achieve it by simply working with a few things. Yes, Christian. Thank you, Fuzzy, for sharing all these nuggets of advice and recommendations. Uh, I will take one more question if we have. Otherwise, I'm going to share with you the feedback the audience has posted while you were sharing your wisdom and your love with us. Hey, don't, don't uh, give feedback by that one lady. That was my mother-in-law. You know that's not going to turn out right. Just, just no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're welcome. So in uh, no specific order, this has been magic. Depth and 2D versus 3D with the background motion. I thought palms up was confidence, not forklift. And so something new I found out. How do make how to make someone feel special? Tell and let them know that hey, you are their hero. Thank you for that. Our gestures do not have to be symmetrical. Voiced sounds versus unvoiced sounds. No where and which ones to focus on. And remember to have enough air in the tank to hit your keywords. The keyword unlocks the meaning of a sentence and 90 to 95% of the time, it's most likely to be at the end of a sentence. And last but not least, have enough juice to get to the end. Yes, poor me, I couldn't keep my composure and I'm asking myself, where was Fursi Gotwako hidden for so long? Fuzzy Gotwako, thank you for being with us. Shen, thank you for taking time out of your, your busy schedule and having your, your assistant, your, your student with you. Uh, she's lovely. And thank you for adding value to our life. Seal the deal. You have sealed the deal for us. Thank you. And we wish you a very good continuation and looking forward to your success. Madam Toastmaster, back to you. Thank you, Christian. Oh my gosh, Fursi. My cheeks hurt from laughing so much. And if you were able to read the chat box, we were all just giggling up a storm, especially when you were doing some of this stuff. Give it up, give him some love, put some hearts on your screen. I'm even gonna do a heart physically and on my screen because you were just that much fun. And I know they're gonna be contacting you to come over on online presenters. And my gut tells me all six clubs will be looking for you.